This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. The second round is in full swing and the action increases from game to game. This is where contenders are separated from pretenders. To give you some skin in the game, DraftKings will be offering free to play pools every day of the basketball playoffs, offers offering players a free shot at up to $10,000 in total prizes. That's up to $10,000 in total prizes for grabs each day. Best part is that it's free to play. DraftKings Free to play pools are easy to enter. Just download the DraftKings app and go to pools and choose from a wide variety of free contests for opportunities to win free cash prizes. All you have to do is answer a handful of questions around what you think is going to happen during that day's basketball games and track your results throughout the evening. Questions will range from which team will hit the most threes to which team will score first. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings app now and use promo code THPN. That's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network. When you sign up to get your free shot up to $10,000 in total prizes every day of the basketball playoffs, head to DraftKings Pools page to get your shot at huge cash prizes. That's right. That's the promo code THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network for a limited time only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for full details. Welcome to the episode <laughs> brought to you by DraftKings. Yeah. This is the House of Hockey podcast, uh, episode 66. I'm one of your hosts, Ray Ray. And I'm your other host, Breezy. And this episode, we have a returning guest and friend of the pod, Joe Cangelosi, who plays for the Carolina Thunderbirds, and he decided to bring in his fellow teammate and roommate, um, a goalie on the Thunderbirds, Nick Modica. And if you listen to the first episode with Joe and all the stories he shared, this, it, it just continues. It gets crazier. It really does. And it was funny because uh, I was actually chatting with Nick uh, prior to them coming on, and he, he kind of was just like, "If you guys want any crazy stories, we got we got handfuls of them from our past season." And knowing Joe's stories from before, we were like, uh, "Yeah, just yeah, just come on and spill." So this episode is basically them just you know going ham on all the stories that they have, uh, and it's really funny and and really cool. Oh yeah, the extremes. And just to give you a little preview, so the FPHL did have a condensed uh, season this past spring, but the Carolina Thunderbirds were the only team in the league that had to play every single game away. They had no home games. They had no home arena. So just let that sink in. They were on the road every single weekend <laughs> playing hockey. So you could only imagine the stories that come with that. Yeah, it was uh, quite entertaining to say the least. <laughs> oh yeah, so stay tuned for that. Um, I have something really interesting to share. I was just in, we'll talk about what we think about the semifinals because that's taking place Um, this week uh, with the hockey, but I was just in Austin, Texas for work as a, as a host, as you know, that I am. And there was a trickster cowboy ropester guy at the event that I was at with a lasso and was like, you know, he does like lasso things. Yeah. (laughs) And I made him lasso me on camera live while I was presenting. So I'm like live talking and he lassoed, put the lasso around me and it was like looping (laughs) around me the whole time I was talking. So that was a first for me. I mean, I've done a lot of interesting things on camera. Um, Like I've interviewed dogs. I've 
um, been on the top of like scaffolding, you know, seven stories in the air and tractors. Yeah. I mean, I, but I've also interviewed like Mark Cuban and Mark Stone, but like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> dogs and it lasses. just reminds me, I was at a, I was at like this bar <laughs> thing yesterday and this, there's a story and they're like, yeah, um, I asked this guy what his dog's name was and he goes, ask him. And so the girl got down and was like, what's your name, puppy? But the, the guy's puppy's name was ask him because like, oh ask him, you know, like ask him, <laughs> ask him. Oh, so funny. she got down on the floor and she was like, what's your name, puppy? Ask him. <laughs> ask him. <laughs> Okay, that takes it to like a whole nother level with like it naming does. a naming a dog. Like it does. That's a little high, high, a little too high level for me. Yeah, like yeah, it's a little too much. Like a but little kind of too inside. Go in, like, social, like, like I wouldn't want it. Like, mate, like I never take him to like social gatherings, like like those places. So it's it's funny because I would never want to name my dog something that I wouldn't want to call him on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> right like ask him I, like that's like what are you saying I don't understand yeah, and how do you nickname that ASCII ASCII <laughs> ASCII yeah I don't I don't I don't dig it but I no. mean there you go yeah <laughs> so there you go <laughs> um how do you feel okay first of all I we ha- I have to I have to just say I was right and I like it when I'm right and I like <laughs> You know, who doesn't like it when they're right? Everybody likes to be right sometimes, especially yeah. when it has absolutely nothing to do with anything of real significance, right. like predicting who's going to win a series in the hockey playoffs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody that I talked to were convinced that the Avs were going to beat the Golden Knights. And I was like, you all are wrong. You're wrong, 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 wrong. I'm right. Yeah. And they Boy, just annihilated yeah. them. And I knew the Golden Knights were going to do that. And I'm so happy that they advanced. And I can't wait to watch them play the Canadians. I just had this conversation with my dad because my dad was like, the Lightning or the uh, the Avs have to win. Like, there's no way. They they have to win. Vegas isn't that good. And I was like, you realize that they're stacked on purpose. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I we went through the roster and I went, all right, you have – um Jonathan Marshall he was the alternate captain for the Panthers when he was there then you have Alex Petrangelo who was the captain of the Blues you go down the list and I mean you have Max Pacioretty who I believe was also the captain of the Canadians was Stoner and captain I think he was an alternative captain yeah I want to say because he was there when Carlson was the captain mm-hmm. so I think he was the alt so then I mean, you go down the list and you have these I leaders. Mean, leaders. So that locker room is just pumped with like people who are like, this is what we have to do. And if you go through that entire roster, you can tie them back to they were probably the most important person in the locker room and potentially on the ice for their mm-hmm. previous teams. They're going to do well. Oh, yeah. Plus, you've got Flurry and Goal, who's another yeah. leader. And um, Alec Martinez, he, terrific addition to the Knights. Sorry. I'm Stanley Cup champion right there. Right. And like, you have Braden McNabb, who was his line mate for, I believe, the second Stanley Cup with the Kings. See, they already have chemistry there. They have the I chemistry, mean, the experience, the confidence. And I just don't think the Avs don't have that. They don't have that, like connection they have talent but it's not connected they don't work together well enough in my opinion their roots don't you know go deep enough like what the Knights have which is ironic because the Knights haven't been a team long enough to have roots but the roots that they have are strong and they're going to make them just go to the top yes agreed I'm very excited to see Carey Price Mark Andre Fleury, yep. two legendary veteran goalies in this setting in like the semifinals. I'm very excited to watch yeah. those two. But I do think that's going to be a really well matched series as well because the Islanders are four lines deep, solid all the way through, just because mm-hmm. they don't have these like big star names like Samkos or Kucherov. 
everybody's like Kucherov's the best player. He should. I'm like, I don't. I think Kucherov is a good player, but His I don't. Stats think- are nuts for not playing an entire season and then coming to the playoffs. So that does say something. But continue. It does, but like. I again, I go back to my argument that you can't just have like one star player on your team yeah. to win a Stanley Cup. So I'm excited to watch you. Them play. I'll chirp you a bit. Um, that what? has to go for the Blackhawks because right now they only have one star player. Well, we used to have Taze. Yeah. Okay, so we yeah. still have those players on the team. <laughs> they just weren't playing. They <laughs> just weren't playing. Okay, but also our entire team has been dismantled. Yes, and I, I, just have, I have said that. I just have to poke the bear sometimes just because oh, that's what we do. For sure. I mean, hands down, <laughs> why do you think we didn't make the playoffs? Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. clear. We, we didn't have a fully stocked team. And that's yeah. what happens. And Shazi yeah. had to retire. Um, I mean, Siebes is gone. Keith's the only one. Like the star core group of depth on our our Stanley Cup winning team doesn't exist anymore. And we're rebuilding yeah. that. So 100%. I mean, there's the fucking proof. The Blackhawks, yeah. look at it. It does look at, look at the Oilers. Two star mm-hmm. players on a top line won't get you a Stanley Cup. Yep. I mean, this is everything. This is something a a real hockey fan would know. I'm not saying anything that doesn't already exist, but it just sort of like gets my goat when people are like, oh, but McKinnon, McKinnon on the abs. I'm like, yeah, but it's McKinnon, not the abs. Like it's not like they have these other star players, but they're not there yet. They're not there yet. Yeah. They're not there yet. At me, at me. (laughs) Go ahead. I'll go toe oh, to toe. Yeah, it's um, fun. It's fun. I'm very excited for both series. I think they're. It's yeah. just going to be good hockey, and that's what we always hope for. And you know what? I'm also very excited for. It's one game a night. Yes. I'm not having to like stack my games. This is mm-hmm. just. This is awesome. I'm so happy. And it starts tonight. And we're recording Sunday. this on Sunday, so it starts tonight so forgive us uh if we're not up to date when you know this episode comes out on tuesday but um super exciting you need to address your unexplained things that you sent me while i was away with that um out of this world worm oh. thing I, yeah I, 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 <clears throat> explain what describe the video and we'll We'll post the video either like on stories or something. So you all can assess what you think it is. Yeah. And I didn't tell you what the update was from. Mm -hmm. So I sent the video um, here. I'll I'll just back up a little bit. Yeah. It was recorded in what? Your sister's backyard? Yeah. So it was my sister's. uh, The camera was technically in her front yard, um, but it was pointing to her side yard by doesn't matter where it was pointing to. It was pointing towards her side yard. And it went off, her ring doorbell thing went off at some ridiculous time in the morning, like I think like three or four in the morning, which we all know, witching three hour. hours, the witching hour, whatever. So she was like, I want you to watch this video. And I was like, okay. So I'm watching the video and I'm like, I, what am I looking at? Because it's, it's tiny. You kind of have to zoom in a little bit. And when you have to zoom in on like the ring, like you can't zoom in and leave it there. Like it shrinks back. It's really annoying. So what it catches is what looks like um, a little white dot ish thing with like a dotted tail. And by when I say dotted tail, it's like separated dots that are in like a tail shape. Like it looks like a tadpole. Yes. Or like Like a big tadpole or like a a sperm. And it's, it's like crawling on the ground. I mean, that's what it looks like. I mean, you gotta, you gotta say what it looks like. It does. Um, it's like crawling on the ground and then it like scales the wall upwards. And then it like immediately takes like a hard right on the wall. And then it like floats and then flies into the air and does like these loops. And then like, does like these weird like things and then like falls back down and then the video stops. So like it stops like on the wall. But I'm like, what is this? Like, I'm confused. I, I showed my parents. My parents are like, I don't know. But my parents are kind of like me. We're just like, what the heck is this? So then I sent it to you. And you're like, 
oh my god like I'm not gonna sleep tonight what the hell is this and I was like gosh like I need to have more people I sent it to my friend Kelly and she's like I don't know man this is odd so then I was like wait a second I gotta send this to Nick and Joe the guests so of this episode because we talked Nick. all about this with them you'll hear that we do we, we do so I sent it to Nick who was with Joe at the time because obviously they're always together and he go basically I'm not going to read our, our our text but he basically goes dude I just analyzed this with Joe we have no idea what this is Joe thinks it's paranormal I don't know I don't like that it crawls I hate crawly things f that and he goes wait I just looked at it more the way it like moves I'm not down for that he's like I think you need to move at the very least <laughs> And then he told me that there was good housing available in the area that he lives. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we send it to also my aunt and she doesn't think it's weird uh, or she thinks it's weird, but she doesn't know what it is. Um, and then my next door neighbors, get this. This is where, you know, people are totally closed minded. My next door neighbor said it was a lizard. And I was like, John, yeah. the lizard lizards don't fly. And he goes, it's a bat. And I'm like, have you ever seen a bat that looks like that? That glows in the dark? And that has a tail? I mean, I could get where it could be like a lizard. That's what I thought it was. didn't they, fly, then it, it would be... <clears throat> and it has and it a floats. tail. And it floats. And it's and... like, it could be like a moth, but moths don't move that way. And moths don't have tail. And even if the video was glitchy why would it consistently have a tail that follows it like that through the whole video no it the video isn't glitchy it it literally looks like something out of a movie like an like an extraterrestrial worm it looks like a, mm -hmm. a like some kind of electric worm thing and it was almost like it was curious and it was like exploring the area but maybe it like just figured out how to like fly or something and it was like whoa what like, am a I doing like a baby like a baby alien yeah 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 okay. i think i know we, you I know we move, sound nuts. <laughs> yeah i know we sound weird but like if you watch this video you would probably be like i mean if you know what it is or if you have any idea you want to talk about it please do because we are all stumped and we are all open for you mm -hmm. know what this could potentially be Okay, and that's a reminder to let everybody know who's listening that if you have paranormal or unexplained things, story and or video proof, let us know. Um, you can call our hotline. It's 323-438-2648. It's also in the show notes on the episode. Um, call us, leave us a message and tell us what you've seen or your story and we'll play it on the show. Um, because if, if you're just as interested in this stuff as we are, hopefully yeah. along with hockey and lassos <laughs> and um, <laughs> things like yeah. that. Let or if if you're too shy to, to tell the story yourself, you can type out the story to us and send the video and we could we'll read, read, it. read what it is and, and still share the video. Um, For sure. We just, we just want to know. Yeah. Because that report's coming out soon from the government. Yes, it is. It's probably going to be out, uh, not this episode, but next week's episode. We're going to know more. <laughs> This week, we have returning guest and friend of the show, pro hockey player Joe Cangelosi, who's joined by his teammate and roommate, Nick Modica. They play for the Carolina Thunderbirds of the FPHL, and that is the Federal Prospects Hockey League. You'll hear about their season in which they played all away games, extreme measures to make beds on a coach bus, <laughs> some interesting bus driver stories and so much more that's going to have you saying no way. I'll start with what I read about the Carolina Thunderbirds season <laughs> in the FPHL off of your website. This article is written on your website that you were going to have a condensed season and you were going to play every single game on the road. That's true. <laughs> that, that, that is, is true. very true. Yeah. Which, that's sad. But, okay, great. You got a season. And then it didn't say anything about, like, 
playoffs or yeah. Yeah. a championship or how did it end? It was just the four teams. I was like, well, but what, what happened? A lot, a lot happened between that article and now. So. <laughs> <laughs> sure Nick, tell us, up. tell us what happened. I don't even know where to start. How do we start? I, take the reins on kind of the setup of the season and how things are going to go, and then I'll, I'll chime in for – Okay, well, yeah. so we were told that this season was going to be done by winning percentage because all of the teams had very restrictive COVID regulations at the time. So – we were not, it was not going to be able to be done to have anybody in our, in our arena. It wasn't going to be worth it, like money wise. So we ended up playing all 20 games on the road and we played in Elmira, New York. We played in Portier on Michigan and we played in Columbus, Georgia. And out of the, all those places, Columbus was pretty much the only one that had like, I think they had 1500 was their capacity. So literally every weekend we would leave Thursday night. And we would come home Monday afternoon, and then we did that for seven weeks. Yeah, seven weeks in a <laughs> row or on the road, and like our, we we had a this year was a, like a pretty good season. I think we we're it was a super competitive league. We had guys on our team that that had played in in the coast, and you know I think maybe not as many people realize that it's super competitive hockey for you know for our league, which typically in a regular season I guess might not be the case, but with the way that things were so slimmed down and every league basically playing like half the teams that normally played. Um, so it was definitely different. Um, but like he said, we were gone every Thursday night and we, we travel overnight because it saves, you know, the, the team an extra night of paying the ho of paying hotels. So yeah, every Thursday night we're on the road and then we'd get back Monday if the bus didn't break down or, you know, maybe it did on the first, <laughs> which is we'll bring up that story. Uh, we had a, <laughs> a seven hour trip turned into a 19 hour trip. Uh, the first oh. trip that we had to New York. So I'm sure Joe will love to dive into that one. Not really. <laughs> it would be perfect. It was, it was, it was an interesting ride home for sure. Um, our, I think the engine was heating up. Yeah. So, yeah. Our, so, so like on the way back from New York, like once we get into like Virginia and North Carolina, it's very hilly. So we're trying to like go up these hills, but like we can't floor it because the engine's overheating. So like we would we would barely make it up the hill, and then we let it we, we would let it ride going and we down, went coast to neutral on the way down to cool down the engine. And this was like, so it ended up turning into like we would drive for like thirty minutes, pull over in like a gas station, let the engine cool down. So this is going on for it's a seven hour trip, and this is going on for this. We're probably like hour eleven. 12 and so now we're at like we must have hit every truck stop between new york and north carolina um and at one point we get off the bus and our bus driver at the time was shaving his beard in the parking lot no shaving cream nothing just like a one blade bic razor shaving in the parking lot i guess he had to like go to his job the next day you know he probably works a regular nine to five no beard. It was, I've never seen anything like this. It was incredible. This is our first trip. So we had 19 more of those, you know, to go. Um, but man, was it a start to a season for sure. Please don't tell got... me he did the whole, uh, like razor across the lips. He was going every which direction. I've never, and oh. like, granted, I, I can't shave my beard because I grow in half a day, but I, I've never seen a performance like this in my life where just like every which way possible, I've never seen no water, no shaving cream. It was oh. unbelievable. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> it was intense. It was, a, it was a good way to start the season off. So we, we started. Okay, wait, wait. This doesn't make any sense. You were driving. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Go ahead. Wait. So you were driving all the way to Michigan from from Winston-Salem. Well, we went from Elmira, New York, back to Winston Salem. It wasn't right. That. You were going like to one city and then coming back and then yeah, go, right. driving even yeah. further away. <laughs> yeah. Play. Did you week. did you at least play two games? So you had like a home game and an away game in the cities. We played three and three almost every weekend. Yeah, oh we would my. play. Typically, they, we play three games the, every the, trip. The, we the first three four weekends, we had a game on Wednesday and then we played Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we. There was a there was a time before the Port Huron trip 
we played one game in Elmira on a Wednesday, and then we we left and went straight to Port Huron on Thursday and played Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then came back home. Oh my god! Wait, that's risky getting on a bus on Thursday to try to play yeah. a game on Friday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what what you, you travel with. overnight. You get to whatever arena we're playing Friday morning, morning skate go to the hotel, like nap, pregame meal, whatever. But we typically would travel every night before a game. And I don't know if you, I'm, I don't know if you guys have ever done the coach bus thing, but like it's impossible to sleep. Meanwhile, like I'll go into this story. So <laughs> our bus, the one that broke down, we have bunks. There's bunk beds. So you have a mattress and it's actually quite comfortable. It was, like, it was, a, it was a makeshift it, sleeper yeah, bus, but there was, there was 18 beds on it. Yeah. It's doable and comfortable. So, well, we didn't have our bus cause it broke down. So we had to rent out a normal coach bus. And <laughs> so what we did, what like we, but this normal coach bus is, isn't outfitted as a sleeper, it's a regular coach bus. So we had to take, like we took twin mattresses, one twin mattress, a guy onto the bus, and then you would sleep like, so he's lucky. He got the captain seat. Oh, so, the three extra seats in the back, he got to lounge out. I'm sure it was like a tropical vacation for him. But typically, so you, I like, I would put my mattress on the floor and then have almost like a bunk mate, which would sleep like over you across the two seats, which is impossible to do. It, I just saw your face. You're thinking about it logistically, well, and you're so like, yeah. this makes no I don't, sense. I don't, I can't. It's I can't visualize. I don't know what you're saying. That just seems on the floor of a coach bus but like horizontal it, like it's impossible and then another and mattress. then another one on top of that across the two seats oh so you have someone sleeping like legit on top of you with so, the whole mattress above so i make this joke i was sick every week and i'm sucking in the air conditioning of this dust is on the ground floor and like i'm not the biggest guy so i would always have bottom bunk and i'm like legit sucking in the air conditioning for an eight hour trip while like one of my, one of my good buddies on the team would sleep above me, but like the mattress kind of sags down a bit. So I'd wake up like four o'clock in the morning, like couldn't breathe, and, like someone suffocating me from the top. It was it was unbelievable. Please tell me you have pictures of what the bus situation looked like. I'm sure we could send you one. It was I'm sure there's photos hanging around, and it's oh my I, god. I, I mean, kudos for the MacGyvering of the at least like making the best out of it and bringing a twin mattress on to have some sort of like comfort uh, like ability to sleep but like okay wait hold on a second i'm really distracted by two things behind you who is the interior designer and clearly the season is <laughs> over because your calendar has nothing on it <laughs> we were actually wow. chatting about, we were thinking the calendar. about it. um Interior design, you, you can take the reins on what's going on over there. Uh, yeah, my girlfriend's uh, interior, not, I don't, uh, sh she's in high end furniture, um, so that she brought her homework, her work home one day, I guess. Um, I was like, oh, I wonder if the boys are like really decorating their apartment. Yeah, no, we're really, we're trying to figure out. To be like, honest, we've been in here for a bit, and my, my mattress is still on the floor, and I don't have a box spring or anything, so. That's Look. definitely not. And then the schedule, obviously, we're in the off season, so we're there's nothing. We got open availability right now. We're <laughs> wondering why don't until it. things change. I'm a little disappointed that it doesn't say House of Hockey podcasts on Wednesday. That we should put something on there. Uh, we should have done that. A lot. <laughs> Just giving you a hard time. Well, you're doing a good job because you're right. We could have done something, but then we didn't do anything. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. So back. Okay. Now that I had that cleared up, um, be, because if you're just listening to the audio of this, there is like a design board behind <laughs> Joe that has like swatches of fabrics. And I watch a lot of HGTV. So I was like, Oh, who's the designer? And then they have like a, a whiteboard behind them with the, the days of the week listed, but um, we'll carry on. So we're, we made it to the off season. How did the season end? so there was no playoffs so, was there so, playoffs what happened okay. so i'm just gonna list this out and i'm not gonna give you my opinion on any of the events that transpired okay but around week three or four of the season the somebody decided that we're gonna take the top two teams out of the four and do like one series after and we were sitting currently at third at that point so that's what happened 
They played one series. Was it best of five or best of three? I think best of five, but they got it done. I think they, they got it done. They, they, swept. Swept. Yeah. They, they swept them in three. And that was the end of that. It wasn't the Commissioner's Cup. They called it the Ignite Cup this year. Which conveniently is the company of one of the owners of one of the teams that participated in the playoffs. So we will. <laughs> I see. I see. You can see where this one's going. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down, Breezy. Yeah. Are you yeah. picking that up? Uh, yeah, I'm picking that up. Yep. <laughs> you guys were able to keep your jerseys this time? Yes. Oh, no, wait, you wait. actually were not able to keep our jerseys wait, this year. One? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. had the jersey situation last time that you were on here. Um, he actually did get one of his jerseys recently, so um, he did clear that up. I think you got a help on that one because the, they felt the heat on getting him one of his jerseys. But, um, <laughs> I don't think they did. I think they made a mistake. That's what it really was. <laughs> I just got lucky that it came in. Yeah. Uh, no, but Andre was back this year. He was as intense as <laughs> – as ever, but no, uh, no fights. So that was good. No coaching, coach brawls, or did he have to play any games? Not this no, year. but he was definitely on the verge of, uh, of, He's thinking about uh, it. of either playing or starting a fight at some point. Joe actually um, suffered an injury this year, so he was on the bench for a couple of games. So I think he did a good job mending uh, Andre actually trying to go after a couple of guys. So that was that was good on his part. You had your nameplate. What about you, Nick? Did you have a jersey with your name plate and your name spelled correctly? Yeah, so actually, that's funny. First, um, first game in, he's already got so, a name. That's oh, a, what no, is this? Um, it took me like four years. I, I came down to Carolina, I guess it would have been not this past season, the one before, after I graduated from college. And so I met the team on an away trip, ended up playing like that game, which is interesting because you don't know any of the guys but yet you're the goalie that's got to play and and at the time i think they were you guys were we were first in the league and kind of playing against another opponent that was pretty high in the standings so i get my jersey i'm all fired up like pre-game like college kid play my first pro game and no nameplate and i have the number three just three and you guys know well like that's not a goalie number uh-uh. like at all so i'm like what is going on here? So I'm thinking maybe it's just for the first weekend. It was a road trip for them. So they didn't travel a bunch of jerseys, whatever the case was. So like ended up playing like both games that we had that road trip and then came down to Carolina, played our, my first home game, still have the number three, no name plate. What is going on? So in college, I wore number 33. It's like kind of been my number. So our second home game, I walk into the locker room. And so we, Steve McIntyre, who's got like a hundred NHL games, the pens, more penalty minutes that I could even count. He's like kind of one of our fighters. And uh, he had number 33. So I, you know, met him and, and kind of chatted or whatever. And um, finally found out that I would potentially have to maybe fight him or offer him something nice to be able to get number 33. And at the time I was a broke college kid. So I wore number three with no nameplate for my first <laughs> season down here. It's like, <laughs> That's how that it's like three games. Though. Yeah. Well, it's still, but I think five, <laughs> Five games and but this year I had my own number and nameplate, so that was good. But the nameplate well, has definitely continued from him for sure. Yeah. What <laughs> happened? I mean, Created how it. much confidence do you lose when you're not using like your own or like a number that you like? Oh, it well, on top of that, a goalie jersey is cut differently than a player jersey because of the pads that you wear. And so not only did I not have my number, but it looked like I was wearing like a slim fit skinny jersey that like, and I'm like, I, like I said, I'm not the biggest guy ever. So I like to look as big as possible when I'm in the net and I have like legit, this jersey is skin tight. Like I could not breathe. I'm trying to like stretch the seams out pregame. Like it was confidence level was zero. Let me tell you, like it was low for sure. I just picture you. Jerseys. <laughs> yeah, I slim fit jerseys. I just picture yeah. you like the kid in Christmas Story, where he's like, "I can't put my arms out." Yeah. Like, oh, the- I thought I'm stretching this thing out. It was so embarrassing. I'm like trying to be like, and you know, coming to a new market, and you're the new guy, and the fans are excited, and I'm like, like I just got to make a save here, and I'm like so uncomfortable. It was. I'm pretty sure you had like 38 saves. And like 40 I, shots. It ended up going well, but I'm saying like in the, in the moment, it was so I've never dealt with more anxiety in my life in this jersey situation. I was looking. I I was I was keeping an eye on the social media to see if your jersey was going up for auction, just in case 
you know, that happened again. And I would make sure to purchase your jersey for you. So you would always have a nameplate and your number just at the ready in case, you know? We're actually talking. I think we're going to see if we can get our hands on one, we'll send you guys one. Oh, <gasps> Yes, I think so. If we could get our hands on one, we'll send you guys one for sure. Yeah, but I don't know if you're ever going to get your hands on one, guys. <laughs> not, <laughs> not long, <laughs> no, mine might take sure. the, the, the longest time ever. To get it's yeah. terrible. I want the miss. We want the misspelled Joe, and we want the number three goalie <laughs> slip. <laughs> I think I'm going to be able to hook you guys up the number three for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Okay, so oh, too funny. what else happened on the road? Like, wh how was the actual <laughs> well, playing? I would, I would, you know, um, I would love to circle back to the bus thing because there's actually Do a couple it. things that we about. Oh, no. like I said, like we spend time on this bus. So back to other than the the bus, the shaving bus driver, we once we contracted out a bus company, they supplied us with their driver, and this guy was like like unreal, like so personable. I think we got him like a sweatshirt the first road trip. So he's rocking team merch, like the first road trip we had. And like, like I said, we leave at night and typically the guys try to sleep. And so this guy is driving, like, it feels like it's 150 miles an hour downhill for seven hours through them. Like you can't sleep. You're like, are we going to hit something? And like, it's a whole situation. So Rumble strips wake us up. You, you hit the, the like out of nowhere. You hit like the rumble strips, and like it's just like it's not an easy feeling. And like we're bussing everywhere, so we get back from our we went from went to New York and then to Michigan from New York and then back to North Carolina. So this was like probably a week and a half trip that we had. Yeah, and we get back from the trip, and I'm in his ear. I'm like, we we need a new bus driver. This is this is enough. We cannot. It's not safe. This is not cool. So. Joe uh, says a couple things to management and I make we, the call. He makes the call, which is that's his job. And we get a new bus driver. But in the meantime, our old bus driver has our coach's number. And somehow he gets wind that he will not be hired for the next trip. And now he's texting Andre like, hey, like not really sure what your guys didn't like. Like basically somebody tipped him off that one of our guys was like, hey, you could not be our bus driver anymore. So now like he's for like three days, he's and the guys are kind of giving it to him because obviously the story kind of circulated. Just, and like you put this guy out of work, like just giving him the absolute works on this. So the next trip we have this woman driver who was like just a nail gun. Like she was awesome, like got us everywhere on time, like great driver so we get back from the trip and i wanted to kind of alleviate some of his pain so i went to our gm and i'm like hey man like unreal bus driver like we should get her the rest of the season like she was dynamite so i tell the boys i'm like hey i hooked it up we're all set so next trip we get on the bus thursday night it's like midnight i get on to put my duffel bag on my seat and it's the old bus driver the one that he had tried to get fired is now back and we you the faces on all 20 something guys that we had in the room because like you kind of pack the bus and then get off and make sure you know everything's set and it was i've never seen anything i thought we weren't like, like the season was going to be done like and this guy's like energy level was 100 and i'm like oh my goodness he's in the back we're like wondering does he know that like, he's the guy that tried to get him gas like oh my god it was so funny but so like just the anxiety level up to 100 again it was like this guy is now back <laughs> it was crazy yeah. so you don't know if he wants to like try to get revenge on you guys and like right. and that's that's like where mine went like i am a, such a conspiracy theorist and i'm like this guy like knows that someone on this bus has the out for him <laughs> like i i didn't sleep <laughs> i didn't sleep one ounce i was uh so my side of the story was like this is kind of dangerous and this guy is adding so much time to our trips. He's missing turns and everything. So I'm like, I'm, I'm doing us a favor. But little do I know, as soon as it's done, everybody's like, you got this guy fired. What is wrong with you? This guy hates you. And I'm just getting it for like three, all all week of practice. And I feel bad too. Like, I, I remember I called home. I was like, I was like dad, uh, I think I got this guy fired. Like, I feel so bad. And he's just like, well, it sounded like he put you guys in danger. So maybe you did the team a favor. 
So I had to deal with that for a couple of weeks, oh but that was towards the end. So thankfully we, we only have to deal with it for like two more weeks of the season. Well, so. And hopefully it doesn't come back next season. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope our bus gets fixed by that. We have a lot of time in the off season to get our, our bus, our bus uh, up and ready. But feeding off that, you should, that was one of your good calls. Why don't you tell them about um, our lunch oh, man. decision that you had to make from the team. That was such a bad one. I <laughs> love that Joe has to make all these decisions though. <laughs> <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> like, so, well, speaking of that, so we're, so we played – did we play a game on Wednesday and we had an it off It was day. the New York Wednesday and we went to Michigan and mm-hmm. had the off day on Thursday. No, the Hands was in Columbus. Oh. Okay. You said Hands, and okay. I know this is going to be a good story. Well, I didn't even know Hands okay. still okay. exists. So, like, this was like – this was like, what is it, week three into the season? Yeah. I think so. So we had an off day in Columbus – and we played, so we got to Columbus Thursday, we skated in the morning, we practiced, and then we had the whole day to ourselves. We had a whole day plan. We we're like, we're gonna go grab lunch, we're gonna do the river walk, maybe go to the mall. It's an easy day, keep it, keep it relaxed, have the team together. So coach comes up to me, he's like, make a decision on lunch. So I'm going around the locker room, I'm asking everybody, he's like, what do you want for and lunch? And this is what not him. Want? Like he cannot just say, Hey guys, like we're this is where we're going. I figured you'd include like everybody. You, you'd want to hear an opinion. You want to see what guys want. So going around, and like one of one of the more like older veteran guys that's played in the coast and the SP for a while, I, I go I go straight up to him. I was like, hey, like, you know, like what like what do you like, what should I do here? He's like, make a decision and just go with it. So I was like, all right, you know what? The, I, I was looking on the maps and everything. I was like, restaurants, like let's sit down, let's enjoy ourselves. I was like, okay, cool hands, like why not? It's downtown. We should be good. They had a nice outdoor patio and everything. So we we pull the bus up and we, we get there. It's like 1230. If I told you the time that we finished paying the check and left, you would be like, what were you guys doing? We left there at like five o'clock. Five o'clock. Room five o'clock. Had so many times. And <laughs> five o'clock, and we, yes. And like, this is Columbus, Georgia, not Columbus, Ohio. So <laughs> it's, it's the South. It's, the it's everything's yes, a little it's slow. 90, it's 90 degrees. We're in, and we're out on the patio. We had 14 guys with sunburn for the next, like, bright orange. It was unbelievable. And all everyone just looked at this guy because he made the call because one of our veteran guys was like, hey, Joe, make the call. Everyone's going to love you. It'll be great. The worst part was I had to call dinner, too, that night. So we went. We ended up going to Texas Roadhouse, like, two hours later. I'm like. Yeah, so now we have, everybody got their food at 4 p.m., and now we have dinner at 6. Guys are looking at him like, what? how are we supposed to eat again? <laughs> <laughs> Next night. Oh my god! Uh, what was yeah. it? Just like understaffed because of no, like I told you how many people were in that restaurant when we were there. <laughs> We'd still be baffled. There was like ten, ten was, people in the whole restaurant besides us. Wasn't busy <laughs> like twelve it, o'clock on a like a Thursday. It took like forty five minutes just to get the beer. Yeah, brought out to us. It was bad. Oh my god! What's it oh, like no. playing hockey with a sunburn? I didn't oh, stun burn my. that bad. I was sitting in the shade. Yeah, you were in the shade. Uh, it's honestly, it's it's <laughs> not it's not like brutal, but I, like especially in our league, like, there's a ton of chirping. Like guys talk all like it's we got a, a lot stop. of tough guys between whistles and just like every minor league thing that you've ever seen. So I don't know if it's more uncomfortable, but it definitely opens the door for a lot of chatter <laughs> for sure. Oh no! <laughs> so, Joe, did you have to uh, pick up the bill on any of those for those bad calls? <laughs> no, absolutely not. I was not picking up the bill. I was kind of hiding once the bills came yeah, out. He was, I was not, he was I like, was not uh, gonna pay for I don't know like, how much tick you guys pay attention to, but Biz with the the T Rex mm-hmm. arm. It's been, you know, it was definitely him after the hands paid his personal bill. He's on the bus for forty five minutes before we were done. I, I definitely I walked around the block maybe three times because I was just like these guys are gonna kill me. <laughs> I'm not even gonna make it to to the game tomorrow. Oh my god! Okay, but Texas Roadhouse. Can we talk about the rolls? Oh man! And the we, butter. We well, could even tell a better story about this. So, um, <laughs> wait, breezy. You've had the Texas Roadhouse rolls, right? I've never had Texas Roadhouse. Oh god, the, the rolls and the, the rolls butters are the best. Unbelievable. I'm ordering it via Uber Eats or something and sending it to your house for dinner one night. 
Okay. You gotta have it. You gotta have it. Okay, but okay. the roles are incredible. Boys, go ahead. So we were we at Roadhouse this year and um Oh <laughs> this one. Oh yeah, my this god, one. this is a different one. Yeah, so we're this wasn't the same night that we went. No, we were we were at a different, yeah, so roadhouse. A different time, but we frequent the roadhouse. Um so we were there and yeah, I'm lucky Joe I kind of took me in as as his roommate and I think he trusts me with a lot of stuff and the story not after this one. No, I lost a lot of trust here. So the story before I came here was that the boys love to say that it's Joe's birthday. Any restaurant you go to, it's his birthday, gets the song, maybe dessert. And he's a sucker for ice cream, so we kind of fall for it every time. And he told me right, it was like right before this road trip, I was like, Man, I'm so happy they don't do this anymore. Like I used to get rinsed on this every time. And we're at Roadhouse and typically we'll sit and eat together or whatever and where the table shaked out, we weren't together. And I'm like, oh, I'll tell you my table. Yeah. My table was coach and the bus driver. Oh, yeah. He was with like the bus driver tried to kill you. But that was his first weekend there. So like, I didn't know him that much. Yes, that bus driver. And so I'm sitting there. And I don't know how this, like, I don't know how I remember. And I'm like, oh my God, I tell our waitress, I'm like, hey, like, it's our captain's birthday. You guys got to bring, like, bring out the works. Like, and if, if Breezy, you never been to Roadhouse, like, they bring out like a whole song. They do like a yeehaw. It's super southern. Like it's like it, 10, 20, oh, 20 yeah, staff. Like that everyone day. working, the bartenders, like everyone gets into this. The bus boys, like it's a whole charade of crap going on. And so I get every, and, and this, I did this like pre dinner. And so the whole dinner, I'm just waiting. I couldn't even breathe. I'm like this guy's going to get the words for his birthday. It finally comes out. His eyes pan over to me right away. I'm like, this guy is going to kill me. I'm never playing another game. It was unbelievable. It was unreal. I hated it. Oh, oh no. We, we live on the third floor. I wanted to kick him out. He's the like, window. you're going out the window the second you get back to our apartment. Oh my God, it was unbelievable. From my perspective, like I'm still, he's been here for what, four seasons now? Yeah. I'm just, like, I haven't played that much here. So like, I'm still like a rookie. So typically like, you wouldn't really expect that from one of the younger guys, but oh my god, dude. he's got any it chance. So much any chance year. I try to get for this guy, I'm, I'm right there. If you're a rookie, has there been any uh, rookie pranks? Every other practice, I put my gloves on. There is bubble gum in like, my and in a goalie glove. Like the fingers are just like a bit of a different setup than a player glove, and like it's impossible to fish these things out. But I have such a good story, so I have like. Like typically a goalie will have like two sets of gloves, practice set, game set, whatever. So I'm going out for practice one day and uh, one of our new guys who's like a bit of a veteran played in a couple of different leagues and I get on the ice and everything's normal to me. And he comes over, he's like, Hey man, like, um, do you notice anything different about your gloves? I'm like, no, everything seems normal. Like I, I knew about the bubble gum thing. Like I knew that it was a thing that guys do, but like I've never had it done to me. So I'm like, no, pretty normal. Like I had a normal practice. This guy had loaded my game glove with bubble gum but it, like just typical forward not realizing i got two separate gloves so i'm like no dude i never realized so i'm sitting there I'm like what the fuck is this guy talking about he goes dude i loaded the wrong glove i must have had like 15 pieces of like hubba bubba stuck in the fingertip of my glove but it was it was the wrong one so i'm trying I to never i'm trying to think who did that and i think i know I could, it was Copes. It was Copes? Okay, yeah, I figured it was Copes. I never... It was Copelinger, so we call him Copes. And, uh, but no, he, like, loaded my glove with bubble gum, and he's, like, laughing the whole time. I'm like, what is this guy laughing? I don't really understand. But, yeah, for rookie pranks, I guess you could you could say that they come about frequently. It's funny. So if you were to play a game with gum in your gloves and, like, a ref were to find out, would that be, like against like the rules regulation like cheating like you know baseball players do the whole no it's it, it's like, it's like a, a singular wrapped piece of like bubble gum like you know what the yellow wrapper i think the blue oh, end. oh yeah yeah so when you stick it in the fingers like you cannot get your fingertips to the end of your gloves so like you can't it feels like you're not like it's not fully on but you can't really you can't put like two fingers into the like, the thing like you cannot get this thing out you got to do like tweezers or something like, no so i don't think oh. it would be a legal situation but definitely like <laughs> i would not be able to use it okay so we survived the bus we survived some questionable dinner restaurant choices <laughs> <laughs> but 
we're never going there again ever it was funny because like the, the the two or three weeks after everybody's like oh better not be going to hula hands and i'm like Tell us about actually playing, though. How was it? Were you it, like it was good? At least you had a season, and that you got to be on the ice together. You got to play. How was the that experience? Did you at least have fun on the ice? Any good fights? Any good chirping? You know that kind of thing. Oh, you were there too. I know. I I got into yeah. You go first on this one. Um, well, like we we like we spoke about earlier, since like half the SP and a lot of the East coast teams weren't there. We like, we had, we had a couple of East coast defensemen. We had a, a guy that played in the East coast for a bit. Um, like half the league were like SP guys too. So like the league were, was a lot more competitive this year, I think. And it just, it, it sucked that we started like uh, 10 days later than everybody else since it was winning percentage. So each game meant more and more to us. And it just took us a little time to figure it out and start, rolling and by then it was a little too late but i mean other than that you know it's the same typical complaints that you have the refs are terrible you know you miss some stuff like i scored the craziest goal this year oh my goodness like, it makes no sense <laughs> he but, scored an empty net goal and we were losing two by two goals in the game on a delayed penalty a <laughs> that was supposed to be called on the other team. So like, okay, so let's go back. So, so we're on the penalty kill at the time and the puck ended up in the offensive zone. And there was a play along the boards that like the two players were getting into it. So the play started going down our end. And by the time that the play was going our end, they had the puck, but the penalty was on them. So apparently the ref's arm goes up and they still have the puck, so they think that the penalty's on us. So the goalie leaves the net. The play, the guy shoots the puck, misses the net. It goes around the, the boards. Then there's a little chip to me in center ice, and I'm, I catch the puck, and I take, like, two strides. I'm looking around. There's nobody there. So I send it. Like, I, I'm at center <laughs> ice. Launch this thing. It goes barred down from barred center down, ice. Barred down, empty net, just barred. It was a missile, too. Everybody down, was losing it. They were goal. so mad. They had no idea what was going on. So, like, <laughs> it's just another weird, random thing that happens in our league that you never see anywhere else. I don't think there's any record of that ever happening oh, in any league. league. I'm, like, I'm telling you after the game, I'm like, dude, an empty goal and you're down two goals. I've never heard of that ever. <laughs> I was, I, I've never heard that before. No, so yeah, yeah, that happened. We that had that um, same trip we had. Our our other goalie was playing in the game and gets hit in the helmet with a puck, like hard oh, shot. Man. Breaks his helmet, so his helmet comes off. No whistle. Whoa. The other team scores. Our goalie has no helmet on, so we can't potentially make this, the next save. I'm losing it too. <laughs> I go over the referee. Good goal. No review. Nothing. No explanation. And this was like the craziest thing ever. What? There has to be a whistle when the goalie's helm is off. That's no? what I said. And apparently we were told, no, that's not the case. So and it was weird, too, because it happened to us. Uh, was it the next game where the goalie lost his helmet yeah. and they blew it right away? Yeah. And like we had a we had a decent scoring chance, I thought, too. Oh, often. my God. Oh, I have such a great story for like how fed that this league is. So we have a guy, and I will not, I'll not going to name names here, but I'm sure anyone listening or watching can do their own research. So <laughs> you know exactly where this is going. Wait, so no, we, have, okay. we have a guy on our team. Um, at the time, we didn't start at the same time that every, every other team did. So you had the option to get loaned to a team that was playing at the time. Oh, and it, okay. if we did start, then obviously your rights would be back with our team, but whatever. So in this specific situation, we started playing, but this player didn't come back to us right away. We kind of waited a bit, see like what our roster looked like. We took him, and then we took him back, and a great guy, great piece for our roster. And so we go back up to play the team that he had belonged to previously. And just, was it a dirty hit? Is that what he got thrown out for? It was kind of. Uh, it was a questionable hit. It wasn't as dirty. It was. It was. It was, it was off the board, so it, was, it made it look like it was worse than what it really was. The thing, like the, I mean, the refs just, just like in any other league or the NHL, like they kind of have a good grasp of things that happen 
previous weekends or off the ice, you know, they, they're very in tune with things that kind of go on within the league and, and stuff like that. They know players by first name, all that type of thing. So da- kind of dangerous hit. And he played like, it was clear that after this hit, there was going to be either a bench curling, clearing brawl. If he ended up getting back on the ice or whatever. So he gets kicked out of the game and which is fine, you know, call it, everything's clear. So in between periods, I think he was, you were not playing this game. No, I wasn't. The owner now of the other team is in the hallway bribing the refs to pay them to not suspend our guy or kick him out of the game to put him to say basically say that he can come back, serve a five minute, come back in the third. So then <laughs> your guys could fight him. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a buddy who I played college with who signed with this team for the weekend. And he was not a fighter, skill guy, like a high skill player. I think he, he played in the SP, he might have played in Europe for, for a bit. Their owner then told him that he would have to fight our guy that was basically getting bribed into going back onto the ice. It didn't happen, though. <laughs> it, it ended up, luckily, it didn't happen, and the refs did the right thing. Um, but yeah, like this owner was ready to pay the refs. I don't know what he offered him or I don't know if you heard this, but it's like a confirmed story that this guy was like willing to do anything to get our guy back onto the ice so he could fight. Like, but he like, came back and played the rest of the game. Like it wasn't, you know, something where he sent a guy, you know, to the hospital. Right. Like, crazy guy. ended. I think he ended up having a couple points. I can do like, <laughs> I think so. but their owner was ready. He would have done anything to get our guy back on. The bribing thing. I'm just like, this and still and happens. This so, is happening. To me, like, I, like, this is, like, m- from the movies. Like, this doesn't Yes. It, like, we're, we're all just happy to play, and it's COVID year, and, you know, all these things. I'm like, you got this crazy owner willing to pay these. Re-. I'm like, what is going on? This is bananas. Just when we thought, like, Joe's stories couldn't top any, like, what could possibly more happen you know and sure. we shouldn't have ever said that because <laughs> clearly yeah. like you guys feel like we need like a three-month check-in with you guys <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was saying to him i'm like they're gonna hear these stories and they're gonna like, call us back and see like check in and say hey you guys still like breathing or like what <laughs> you guys still all right hopefully this episode doesn't get either of you um in any sort of trouble. <laughs> oh, no, Watch the been... bus driver will be listening That's to this. That's what I'm saying. He's going to figure <laughs> it out now. Finds this thing, we're going to be... He's like that mother. In a heap of trouble. <laughs> Is there uh, any good chirps that you've had, minus the uh, the sunburns or uh, anything like that? You got fired oh, up in Port here on that one. That one, I did get fired up in that one, but that's not really something that I would say on a podcast. Um, <laughs> no, but so we were we were playing in in Columbus. I think we had like a three game series and played like really well, like Dynamite Friday night. I think we won. It's a pretty big win for us. I think we won by three or four. Yeah, it was a um, lot. At the time, Columbus was like number one team in the league. So I'm on the bench for the second game to then play because typically on our road trips, if you're the starter, you play like Friday Sunday. Um, that type of thing. So I played Friday night, played well, was on the bench for Saturday. And one of their guys who uh, I won't name him, but he's like a couple of like coast games, SP guy. I don't know him, but I like, we know of each other's faces, whatever, like stick taps or something during the game. And so the door in like in the second period, our defensive doors next to their D door. So I'm sitting there and he looks over at me. You're going to love this story. And he's like, Hey, I'm like, what's up, buddy? And he goes, um, what, how does your elite prospect say you're 5'10", man? And that's like kind of our joke because like I am not 5'10". Whoever blessed me with my elite prospects and said that is. So I look over at him like, ah, like just tried to joke around. I'm like, ah, I sent him like a blank check, whatever. So when I look back around and then I look back and I'm like, why are you looking me up for? Like, I'm like, what are you doing online looking my name up? He's like, oh, like, fuck you type of thing. Like, um i he just like said that played well the night before and he was like kind of questioning how i got that one going but no as far as chirps that's like if a guy's willing to look you up in this league then i guess you're doing that's something that's true right. that's true <laughs> unfortunately a lot of uh <laughs> there's a lot of chirping in this league that's uh <laughs> families I, and girlfriends are kind of uh open for chirping unfortunately so i'll leave that it? i'll leave that stuff out of uh i don't i'm not good at it so i don't really do it I never 
a lot of stuff in this I, league I can't, is. Guys. I just look stupid. <laughs> yeah, you do. I would look really <laughs> stupid if I did. You gotta be quick with it. Yeah, and I'm um, not, so I couldn't do it. it it's funny because a lot of times once guys are once you're in this league, you're kind of older guys are kind of stuck and you might, you know, make your way around a couple teams. So they're, you know, whatever dirt and our fans are, especially North Carolina are very ruthless. Like they'll chant sisters names and like, and there's nothing that's off the table. So we've actually had a goalie get off the ice and attack someone in the beer garden. Um, so yeah, getting in the goalie's head is definitely something that the beer garden. He jumped over the barrier into into the stands. I I, I, I I swore I saved the video somewhere, but I can't find it. You gotta find that one. Oh God. They, yeah, they, they, like they, goalie they, had his skates they, on. They, they like, arrested him too. I think he, they, there's a picture in goalie out. gear. Yeah, there's a skates, picture floating around. Out, yeah. He's got handcuffs on in all of his goalie gear. We have we'll have to find it yeah, somewhere, but somewhere. it was it's an unbelievable picture. And this is a <laughs> legitimate <laughs> league. Like we're here for the Hansons. <laughs> They arrested this guy, put him in the cop car with his oh goalie pads and stuff. Yeah. This, I just, it's still. You have to come down and watch it and yes. get a feel yes, for it. Yes, there's no experience other than. <laughs> no, I mean, like, this, the stories are enough to get, like, I mean, I would watch anyway, but, like, to see, to experience this in real life, like, I just pray that you guys have a season and that, like, we can come to a game in the fall and that you guys don't get fired for being on our podcast and we can come watch. We should record a podcast at their game. Yes. Yes. That's an an idea. That... Joe, make it happen. You've got the connections. Apparently, you have to do all that. You can make the call. As soon as I get the schedule, I'll send it to you guys. Let me know when you can come. Oh, my God. That would be fun. Do you think you guys are going to have a a regular season, if you will? For sure. I think so. Uh, Because, like, North Carolina is wide open right now. Yeah, we're no masks. Everything's pretty. Bars are open until 2 a.m. And and besides that, I think we're going to have eight teams next season. I think eight or ten. So, we're going to – it should be back, back to normal. Good. So Breezy, did you have anything else or should we give Nick the final three and then do the last one for the both of them? Because we already oh, asked Joe, he, right? Yes. He has we, no idea about the questions. We were listening to the podcast, but we never got to the end, so he doesn't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead, Let's Breezy. Do it. All right, Nick. So who is your favorite hockey hunk? Dang, there's some good looking guys. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to go low. Like, I think Ekman Larson's unbelievable looking, but I'll go like Matthews. I think with his style, the way that like he dresses and stuff is pretty like fashion forward. So he's definitely bad. Uh, I, uh, no, Austin. no, you can't pick Austin Matthews. I love that. <laughs> you can pick whoever he but, wants. <laughs> is that no good? The pick- bucket hat, the bucket hat look, and the trash, trash stash, really? Well, anything different. I mean, he's just anything different he's not afraid of. So he's pretty sure. Okay. I, All right. He's got good style. Going. Okay, fine. The unique aspect, I'll buy that from you. But like. Well, I mean, everybody's got the good hat. I mean, Neilander is he's, he's a rocket. I don't think I've ever criticized anybody's. No, you came after that one. Ever? You haven't. You're just a leaf sater right now. No, you can't, <laughs> yeah, pick I can't pick him. I think you're the you first. Ekman Larson? No. Ekman Larson is very good looking. Oh, well, these are, yeah, Man Rocket. I went with Lundquist. Yeah. That's a good G, though. You got to get one of these new kids in there. Listen, when I, heard the, when, I, when I heard this story with Tyler Sagan, it was like, why are you dressed up like it was business casual? And Henrik Lundqvist goes, there's no such thing as business casual. You win. Uh-huh. Right there. Done. Agree. So, I just I just don't like the bucket hat look. I don't like the – he looks a little trashy and scary. Uh-huh. So <laughs> it's like I just – I don't know. I don't know why – He's I'm like, sorry. He's like West Coast style. You guys don't like that's like Cali style almost. <laughs> it's true. I mean, yeah. it's European for sure. I mean, yeah. you're telling me if Austin Matthews didn't show up in a white van, you wouldn't get in it? Mm-mm. I'm I'm really sorry. I had such a reaction to that. I never I, done I love that. It. It's hilarious. <laughs> Nick's like, I'm making the call right now. You guys are not coming to a game. 
Bowling. No, he's going to wear a goddamn bucket hat when the game's <laughs> over. I'd be like, hey. You guys call me an infant too. Wait for my next photo. I'm going to get an exact outfit of Maddie. And You're allowed to have your choice. The next question is, who is your favorite hockey lady? I'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, Sarah Sivian, who is one of the reporters for the Hurricanes, who dates a guy that's on our team, who might have been mentioned in the story earlier in this podcast. Um she is, uh, I love, She's she's got some really good stuff that she writes for the cane. So I think she kind of pushes the envelope on that. So I'll say nice. that. Nice. And do you have a Sidney Crosby story? A Sidney Crosby story. Um, ooh, good question. I did have his, jer- his draft jersey, first year in the league. I have a Crosby jersey. Got My dad's like one of his uh, gifts that we kind of had in, his, in my dad's office was every rookie card that Crosby had with like a big signed uh, thing. So. Um, other than that, no, I've never met Sid, but heard some stories through the grapevines of just like knowing hockey guys that he's an absolute lunatic in the gym. Like day after they won the Stanley Cup, heard he's lifting weights and just um, just a freak athlete. So no, no personal stories, but definitely a lot of respect for someone like that. It's a conspiracy question, so it's totally <laughs> off the charts. Team me up. How much time? Oh do we my have? god, you could take as much time as you want because we're totally into this. So individually or together, if you guys have it, individually preferred, do you guys have either a paranormal story, extraterrestrial, or I guess you can do a conspiracy if you wanted to go down a rabbit hole, but not too deep. (laughs) Wow. This is being recorded. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This might might take it off the rails a little bit, but that's fine. (laughs) Um, like I am such, and I think he's on the same level here. Oh, I got a paranormal one, but you could go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I just Uh, thought of one. (laughs) So no, it's okay. Like I am such a like true believer in that we are in like a simulation. Oh, this one today. It's yeah. This one today. So like we're listening to what came out like nineties music in the car, something like super uncharacteristic. Listen to like nineties music. Then we go to like one of our like. Yeah. Local bars that we frequent, not daily, but it's frequent. And they're playing like the like same band, same song, like like the song was picked up as if where like where we left where off. Where we left off. But we weren't listening to the radio. We were like his phone was plugged in. So I'm like, what is going on here? So I'm like, we went to go get lunch and drinks at another place and boom, like another like same type same of music, type of music same right band up. picking right up again i'm like dude this is unbelievable and then he told me the stat what was your alex smith the football player oh that all the stats with uh so like basically and alex him smith and with, with washington they both broke their leg on um, like the same yard line the games ended the same score it was the, the same day it was the same day just like 33 33 years, later. years apart yeah, wild. And, and wild. So I'm like, dude, we it's a simulation that we live in and these things just like can't just possibly occur at the same time. So that's where I'm at with the conspiracy theories. You could go <laughs> go ahead with yours. For some paranormal stuff, I don't know what it is, but there's some times where like if I'm walking at night through neighborhoods and stuff, lights will like turn off. Like street lights will just go off. It's weird. Oh. It is very weird. Yeah, I can never figure it out. I've never figured it out, but it's happened multiple times in different locations. And I've been here for this one before. Because like we said, like our whole like bus situation, like sometimes we get back to the apartment and it's like weird timing and you're just trying to like stay active and not like whatever it is. Like we'll be walking around and I think it's like a thing with him and like just street lights are going out and like random crap. It's he's got the paranormal stuff out the wazoo. We'll wrap it up. Tell everybody, Nick and Joe, remind everybody where they can follow you on social media. And um, yeah. You go first. My handle is, is super simple. Uh, mine is Joe underscore Cangelosi on Instagram. Um, that's all I got. Yeah. And this is my only plug. I'm Modica33. Um, but I don't post anything too interesting, but I'll comment it if you guys follow. I'll try to follow. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.